Happy Friday, Pat. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hope oh, I'm glad to hear you're doing better. Better. I know you said you had uh, uh, oh. some cold and flu symptoms and stuff. And yeah, last two weeks they come and go. It'd, it'd be good, you know, crappy for two days. Come go away for two days and then come back. And you know, last night I had the chill. It's just been crazy. Yeah, frustrating. That's, it's good to have you back today. <laughs> I uh, um, um, didn't want to have to do this with the uh, with the stick pad Pat on a stick yeah uh, actually one of our youtubers i think it was actually youtube no i don't think it was her it was um they they called it um mcstick mcstick yeah <laughs> and uh because this is the uh i don't have my overlay up there what am i thinking here this is the mick report the Kona mcmasters where we go over the numbers for arizona and uh it just it defies logic right now um when you look and you see that Interest rates have gone up, and and they've they've gone up pretty significantly, right? This week, and yeah, uh, it's been. I mean, for, for just a whole month of February, I mean, it's been. Um, they stabilized here last. We had kind of a, a down day today. Uh, we had the reaction in the bond market was down fifty four basis points, but now it's only it was only finished up down thirty seven. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Well, here's here's the curious thing, Pat, and you know how I do this seven day moving average. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, because um, um, I, you know, the blue line is number of new listings that come on over the seven day average, and the yellow line is number of new contracts. And the new listings took a plunge. It's not big, maybe 200 homes, but new contracts have been edging up now this see this little gap right there it's yeah. only um 31 units which the last time we saw a gap like that was in march of 2021 when things were crazy now that doesn't mean things are going to go crazy but what it means is that um you can't get uh, and i'll go to this chart here this is the cromford market supply index, um, supply and demand, you can't get um, radical moves until you have gaps like this. See that where de demand fell to the floor and supply went way up yep. here? So markets crashed. So then down here, it's the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. So here's demand, which is the pink one, and supply was down here. So until you get really wide gaps like that, the market's just going to muddle. And that's what we're seeing on the not only a seven day moving average, but right here, you can see that um, this, and I'm going to see if I can zoom in here. Let me, let me hit my control button here for a second. And um, the demand side, well, that didn't make any sense there. I'm going to undo that. Um, huh. I better refresh this one. Here, see when you do things live, screw ups happen. There we are. Um, yeah, what I'm meaning to show everybody is right in here. See the blue line? Mm -hmm. That's that's supply. That's an index. Okay, so inventory is coming down, and guess what? Demand is eking up, and that's what we're seeing because we were running with demand at about 2,200 units every seven days. Now we're 3,200 units. And we seem to be staying in there. Like Terry says, good luck in the hood. In the hood. I agree. And so, um, you know, is the market brisk? Not by any stretch of the imagination. But we are seeing homes, they come on, they're gone, you know, when they're priced right. And it's because there just aren't that many. And there's just enough buyers out there, mm -hmm. uh, you know. We got to go. Andy, Mandy, Mandy, Mandy. actually it live. How are you? So, Mandy, welcome. Cool. Um, here's the latest Crawford Market Index. Now, last week we saw a bunch of these were red. And now it said here that uh, the era of leadership for the Northeast Valley is clearly over in the Southeast Valley. Central Valley and West are now taking over the market leadership role. Look at Buckeye. It's come up. It was in the 50s. It's now 63. But it said most cities have moved strongly in favor of sellers, particularly Glendale, Gilbert, Avondale, Phoenix, Queen Creek, Peoria, 
Goodyear, Mesa, Tempe, and Chandler. Boy, I'm running out of cities. As yeah. a result, prices are now starting to climb again, marking the end of the correction that started roughly eight months ago. Huh. Do you think that's going to continue is what everybody's asking. Seatown finally takes the lead. Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> Chandler's up there. Is that where you live, Keenan? Um, Stephanie says, rate impact has impacted me. It's getting difficult to receive your monthly payments to receive what your monthly payments will be. If you don't have the payment amount, how can you list your home for sale? Sad. Well, that, yeah. that, that goes back. That goes back to what I've always been. I've been saying the last couple of months now. You see the volatility. You know when you got volatility in rates, um, it just causes confusion amongst the buyers and sellers. Yeah, it was better when it was kind of sitting at five point nine and just hanging there, right? Yeah, yeah. And now they're bouncing around like a ping pong ball. And the other thing too is that you know, look, some of these um, uh, born and raised. All right, you, you probably know my. You look like maybe you're my oldest son's age, but I can't tell from here. So which high school did you go to, Keenan? Um, this kind of lags by a week or two, you know, when you start looking at these indexes because they're looking at closed numbers. So, you know, while it's moving in favor of sellers today, maybe that will change a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I'm expecting it because, you know, the last time we saw rates climbing near seven, things slowed down considerably. So yeah. I, I'm, I think it's safe to say that we're going to see more of that. Um, but it's just interesting to watch how it, you know, um, like Billy Crystal said in The Princess Bride, um, not dead yet, mostly dead. Um, after desperate sellers are done, we should stabilize. Chandler High, class of 06. Oh, interesting. I I could toss some names at you there. I One, one of my sons, I think he graduated in... In 06, Kevin from Hamilton. And a lot of his friends were at Chandler High. So good class up there. Um, so I think, you know, as we go through and look, um, we shouldn't be shocked if in a couple of weeks, if rates stay where they're at, that the numbers kind of start mm -hmm. petering out a little bit. And and you are the numbers because somebody, uh, boy, it's all over the map on our viewers. Some of them say, I need to bet you a dollar again. And uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> And I've routinely said no. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now that today we had, you know, we had, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we, obviously we had the PC numbers come out today and they were about 0.6. Um, they were just about like, I think one tenth of percent higher than expectations. So, you know, the, the market today, it got down a little sloppy. It was down like 54 basis points on the five. I, that that third, down 37 was down 54 at one time. So it kind of, came back we're seeing a floor as you can tell on you know right um you know the right i don't know if i can uh, i'm not sure you know, i wish i had i can't get that red line that you have but that this last down down yeah. trend right here um that that stair step climb downward has been obviously that's prices we're seeing some stabilization right now um the last couple of days the last week but you know the whole month of february has been obviously just a crappy it started february 2nd so, I mean, we're literally almost through the whole month because being a short month. So February has not been kind to rates. But uh, Barry, Barry Abib, who I follow, this is the MBS Highway. He feels that we're, you know, we had some, have some, had some pain. He goes, well, we'll see some light at the end of the tunnel here. He goes, he believes March 10th and March 14th, we're going to see some, you know, some revisions on the job, on the job numbers. So it's been... It's just been really one of these, um, like that that chart that you showed, where we're seeing this, you know, this, you know, this, you know, back and forth with buyers and you know the buyers and sellers. I mean, we're just getting this. We might be in this for a while because you've got the Feds now. You know, the PCE came out today was a little bit stronger than normal, so you wonder if um, the Feds are saying, "Hey, I was watching one commentator on this one financial news network." Saying that the feds, feds kind of put themselves into a kind of pickle now because, um, you know, they've been doing these 25 basis point, you know, moves, right? But if they think that, you know, they're saying that the, you know, one commentator was saying that we want to see the federal fund rate at six or seven. Now, now, now you get the feds in a pickle 
Because if they do move up 50 basis points, that's going to cause a reaction because they're like, oh, well, you know, we misstepped and now we got to bump it up even further, you know. So it's just been a real strange market. I mean, you can see, like you said, this last week, last month, um, rates have gone up. I mean, we've gone from 5996. I, I can't pull it up because I my my stupid, uh, you know, my yeah, mouse you're feeling going, better, but your mouse took a my, I'm feeling better, but my mouse is now feeling like crap. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Jesus, my mouse has got the flu. Um, <laughs> Christ. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, we went from six to about you know, right now. I'm, I'm looking at this one lender, Next Bank, out of, you know, they're a good bank out of Texas. Um, you know, six and five A's can, with a discount. Uh, points of twenty seven hundred dollars, uh, so you know you're looking at you know basically five eighths of a point, and I'm looking at a five hundred thousand dollar loan with ten percent down. Your payment um, has gone up about let's see here, almost three hundred dollars, two hundred seventy two hundred seventy five dollars. That's so, pretty huge. Yeah, huge so I mean, it's just it's nuts how. You know, somebody can't make a financial decision. Like you said, in just 30 days, it's, you know, actually three weeks, it's kind of rates of, like you said, beginning of February. And um, like I said, we're starting to tip. I know lenders are, other retail banks are probably seven and a quarter, seven and three eighths. You're, like you said, you're probably going to see the demand. I, <coughs> excuse me. I will say that um, I am still seeing good demand, though. I mean, I'm still seeing people saying, "Hey, I'm going to buy a house." Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not brisk, but it's it's a surprisingly active. Judy's asking, "Have vacant land prices lowered to pandemic prices?" You know, I don't know for a fact because I don't really follow vacant land, but I'm going to guess and say I kind of doubt it because not really anything has come down to pre-pandemic <laughs> prices yet. So I, it would be safe to assume that and Terry, sick but ruggedly handsome, according to Snapchat. Sure. <laughs> it's chat gpt uh, yeah so um but uh, <laughs> we've we've had fun with that thing um this this is a head headline that um you know there were headlines that came out this week and you know and it made people think that that uh, investors are you know going to start selling their houses but all these headlines are basically saying they're buying fewer homes but market share expected to hold set steady. So the investors are buying fewer. That, that makes sense. Um, senior economist at Redfin said, even if there's a rebound in the number of homes investors purchased later year, this year it's unlikely to return to levels observed earlier in the pandemic, of course. And uh, so basically they're saying, you know, they've, they're putting their money in other markets and they're looking at different, you know, parts of the country and, or maybe they're sitting on their cash for a while, but it's not a, a panic thing. It doesn't mean that, that prices are going to come crashing because investors just decided not to purchase. Now the numbers came out for offer pad and open door offer pad lost 40 million in the fourth quarter and open door between the third and the fourth quarter. Guess how much they lost, Pat? Which one, uh, which company? Open door. Um, let's say 250 million. 1.3 billion. You were close. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, government wow. spend. Wow. Uh, Keenan says, what's concerning with the Fed's action? A billion? 1.3 billion. 900 million in Q3 and 400 million in Q4. No way. Don't worry. They'll make money soon. They <laughs> only have 560 listings active right now. So they're trying wow. to get up underneath it. Um, so, you know, Keenan, I believe that they run the risk of over tightening. The other thing here too, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm no grand economist, but here's, here's what's ringing around in this little, that's why you have me here brain here. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question <laughs> no, just kidding. back in the eighties when, when interest rates shot up to tame inflation, um, we didn't have to worry about debt. Yeah. Back then, I mean, our, our debt to GDP was, I think it was 45%. Was it like 45%, 20 or 30%? Yeah. Well, now, 
125? 125. So yeah. how long can the central banks keep rates elevated? And, you know, I mean, inflation in a way helps erase debt. So I don't know if they're really going to squeeze this till they get 2%. Um, no. Uh, Sean, he waits, until, he waits until after the show to do that. I, so. Yeah, wait after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I got asthma, so I can't smoke that stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, no, I mean, you got, I mean, the interest costs alone, they're saying, you know, you're talking, look, you'll get the deficits. Like I said, this one finance guy was talking about, he's like, you know, you're talking about 30, how many, 32 uh, trillion. You know, and it's like three hundred and thirty billion dollars in interest a year, um, and it's just going to keep growing. I mean, you get rates that are too high, they're going to finance that. You know, you're you're looking at they there. It's going to be unsustainable. So that's what you know. You're right. I think they're they're battling against that also. And I think the two percent number, I you know, I like to know who came up with that number. You know, I mean, really, I mean. Could, you know, I, I think they're, they're, I mean, um, I think, uh, you know, it's like a guideline. I mean, Jesus, I mean, you know. Well, it's I like most government numbers that come out there. Like you look at FHA loan limits. Yeah. Okay. yeah. What, what is it today? Um, 441,600. Why isn't it just 442,000? Yeah. <laughs> it's just exactly. You know, they, they never just give you a flat number. It's like $446,600.42. Yep. Yep. So I, th I think the feds are kind of, they're kind of getting themselves in a pickle though. Like you said, now, I mean, if they, you know, Barry believes that the numbers, the employment numbers um, are fake. <laughs> um, there's just a lot of seasonal, they, they do all these adjustments. It's, you know, the seasonal adjustments and the, you know, the, you always see these, you know, revisions of one or two months later. So he believes that employment numbers are not really as strong as that they, as they look to be. So he, he thinks they're going to see some backing and feeling with rates here. Um, you know, he said, we got to get through this pain. And eventually he said, we'll come out of this thing here in the next couple of months. You know, he's, he, he thinks the next 30 days, 34, 30, 40 days, we'll see a little relief in rates. So what is that? You know, if we, if we do see relief in rates, though, what does it do with demand then? Well, we're sitting here at 3,200 um, every seven days, and it's been kind of stuck there. Um, if if we do see a reduction, let's let's say we're back down to 5.9. Okay, um, mm -hmm. Jessica, that's our partner in crime in the East Valley. Welcome. We're going to have you on this show. You know that. So, um, so Jessica, uh, Jessica, she is with uh, with Agave. Agave. Yeah, she's got her own brokerage firm right here. Home and Investments LLC. So she is going to be my referral partner in the East Valley when I'm out of out of town. She really knows her stuff, guys. So in fact, uh uh Mandy, I think I just I sent you some stuff from her this morning, this afternoon. So um anyway, like anybody knows who that is, right? So you can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um I think, you know, you get down to 5.9 and let's say we realistically do that again. Um, you're going to see inventory kind of start to come back up. I think a little bit. Will sales chase it? Probably mm -hmm. go from 3,200 to maybe 3,400 every seven days. And uh, will it have much of an impact on pricing? The thing here is that right now we're seeing list pricing really kind of hang there. And again, this lags a week. So can't wait to see what happens to this in the next two weeks because you can see that the rate of ascent is just barely different here. So um, this list pricing continuing to go up this year, which is surprising to a lot of people. But again, I caution you, there is a lot of um, seller concessions behind that number as well. Uh, on average, 9,900. So it's a, uh, um, People are asking more so they can give more. I yeah. did get a question today. A gentleman said he had a, a home that he built up in North Scottsdale last December. He sold it for 1.2 million. He's got one now that's roughly the same size, but on more property. He asked me, do you think I'd get away with listing it for 1.3? And I said, well, I, I don't know a whole lot about it, but 
you know, he said he sold the one for 1 1.2 in December of 2021. And I said, well, we aren't at that price yet. That pricing level. We're getting close. Mm -hmm. December 2021 would be right here. But that's Christmas week. So let's go down a couple weeks here. They're 340 square foot versus 354 now. So we're almost there, but not quite. And mm -hmm. that's just... Mm -hmm over at 30,000 feet and going, well, you could look at it this way. So I don't think he's way out of line by going up $100,000 versus the sales price for December. But, you, know, you don't yeah. know until you list it. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So, but, um, you know, it's just weird. I just, you know, this popped in my head, you know, that there's a train running through my head. You know, there's always that little train that runs through my head. Yeah, lots lots of little thing. trains, lots of little trains <laughs> running through the head. But, um, you know, I just, just stepping back and looking, you know, everybody's trying to, you know, try to diagnose this market and what's going on. But you look at what we had in, you know, 19 and 20 and 21, you know, we had this rise in 21 and, you know, obviously 2022, you know, we had, you know, some falling off, but it just seems like this whole year, I think I've, I've said this a couple of times and it's just kind of, I'm trying to gather up a theme for this year to see where the hell's go, what the hell's going on. But, um, it just seems like we're going to be muddling around here. I mean, the well, feds maybe. don't really know the Fed. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, we got this, it's going to, we're going to have the, I think we're going to be in this herky jerky market this whole year. I it just, I kind of, I, that just kind of came over me, but I just think that it's going to be, there's no rhyme or reason. Would you say um, for this, you know, we get one month where it's demand and then all of a sudden you got kind of sliding off and the demand picks up, you know, it's just, there's this, kind of this back and forth does that make sense yeah when i think of what it is that there is there's um there's people that just want to get out of their leases and yeah they're very they're very frustrated that they can't and when yep. they see yep. a window of opportunity they get in and they get in as a as a bunch of bulk buyers um yeah because you know and then we went from this period where in december and early january you could go out and look at a house and you could go home and sit on it for a few days yeah. and <laughs> And then all of a sudden that went away in February and you're like, damn it, it's coming back, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and then in February, here we go, you know, you see a listing. Yeah. Let me make an appointment for Friday and Thursday. You get a, an email that, you know, that it's or a text that it's under contract. And yeah. And, uh, so, so when you watch the rates start to climb, you start thinking, okay, that's probably going to go away again. That'll be a good thing. Uh, but yet the costs are higher and are there people that are really resigned now to say, I'll go ahead and bite the bullet now because I feel like rates will be lower later mm -hmm. and I can refinance? Uh, maybe that's some of that. Um, yeah, I, I, I just ran the numbers for a guy. 675000 purchase. Uh, 675000 are purchase at six and a quarter, okay? He was going to maybe use a buy down to get even six or 7000 So you could probably get six and a quarter based on you know, six or seven thousand dollars in permanent buy down. But then I said, well, in the future, you know, his payment was going to be like thirty eight, you know, sixty or uh, thirty eight. Uh, I had the number here, and I where is it? Um, um, thirty eight hundred dollars. And um, let me see here. Yeah, uh, thirty eight forty three and six seventy five at six and a quarter. But if rates go down to four and five ace, he drops his principal to thirty two thirteen. That's a six hundred, uh, six hundred, almost fifty dollar difference. Yeah, from six huge. and a quarter, six and a quarter. He goes, that's a that's a lot of money. He said, you know, and he, I, I just was not trying to set him up. I'm saying, hey, if, if rates do come down here and maybe the high fours, um, let's say, you know, I was being, you know, maybe dreaming right now four and five A's. but you know, if we do somehow, Barry Beeb thinks that we will see rates eventually taper off here down the road. It could be another twelve months out, but. Um, you know, that's a $650 a month difference. That's huge. Well, I don't see anything that, you know, but you see the numbers better than I do, but um, um, uh, I don't see anything that's telling me that <clears throat> rates are going to go. I'm catching your cold over here. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> How does refinancing work if you don't have equity, assuming prices drop? Well, that's the big, you know, the big question out there, but. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's. You know, prices do drop. I mean, I based on what you and I are talking about, I mean, do we really see 
do we see that crash? You know, I mean, we're going to see maybe some softening, but there's still a lot of demand out there. There's people in the, uh, in the woodwork, you know, behind the scenes that are looking to buy, like you said, getting out of their leases. And um, if rates, do, you know, I just don't see it. I, I'm until, you know, you can only go with what, with the information, what you've got today to make a decision. Yeah. I mean, you can bounce around different scenarios all you want. Like, like, okay, let's say rates really went down and you, you're an opportunity to finance, but prices have gone down 15%. Well, if rates stay down, well, prices might jump up another five or 10, you know, and then yeah. you're back where you were. So, <laughs> but you can speculate yourself into the oblivion there. So, Pat, um, Terry wants to know how many points for a 321 buy down. Um, it depends on there's a calculator. Um, from what I've seen, it's typically in the it's not, I mean, a, usually a 2 1 buy down has been running on a, a $450,000, $500,000 house. It's about nine, ten thousand $10,000. So I think a 3 2 1 will probably be in the high, you know, teens. I, you know, I could run a calculator. I don't have it off, would have it off the top of my head, but it's probably in the height, 17, 18,000. Um, you know, a 3 2 1 buy down doesn't seem as popular because you're stretching out. Um, yeah, you could, you know, you, you typically don't get that much in seller concessions to use it to do, be able to do a three, two, one buy down. You're getting enough, you know, these seller concessions are typically coming in around $10,000 or so, let's say eight to nine, $10,000, um, which is enough to do a two, one buy down. And really quite frankly, with the interest rate scenario that we're at, you know, two, one buy down should be sufficient enough to basically, you know, ride out this, you know, this interest rate, you know, hopefully this, you know, this last, you know, this rise, in uh, rates well you know, it works where, better if you can get the sellers to help contribute towards it well that, that's the only way you can i mean there's some lenders there's very few lenders that um, will you you have to have the seller do the um to you know they have to contribute <coughs> and that's what they have to contribute that but um it's it's i i i haven't done a three two one i've done two one buy downs i think three two one three two one you're stretching it out for three years and i think within two years a year to two years, you're going to see, you know, based on what I, you know, following Bar Mr. Barry Habib, that he feels that we're going to see lower rates. So I think that's the two one buy down. I think, quite frankly, is sufficient enough for somebody buying a house. I think three two one is kind of overdoing it. Um, you know, if you're getting seller concessions, you could just do a permanent buy down too. You know, using that money for a permanent buy down because three two one, you know, these are those are temporary. You could do a permanent one also. So hopefully that makes sense. There yeah. it's it's confusing um, <laughs> <laughs> for me anyway. Um, I think now next week I'm going to be I'm leaving tomorrow morning going to uh, Rocky Point, and I'm actually going to make a video on the whole experience while I'm down there just to, for people that don't know what it's like. And if I get you know inside a Mexican over, jail, if I get pulled over, you'll see it. Um, <laughs> see the transaction happen live. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Is that camera on? <laughs> so. <laughs> No, like Ruby said, she told us the other day that she her, she, her and her husband were driving through the first town uh, when you cross the border, and the name escapes me. But she said they were going, you know, the speed limit, 20 kilometers, and they got pulled over. And they said they were giving him a ticket for going too fast over a speed bump. Yeah. Like, That's... How much? And $200. Were... <coughs> and they gave, him, um, they gave him 20. They gave him 20. So, um, so we'll... We'll see. Um, and uh, watch out, by the way. It looks like hurricane here in L.A. I've seen that, but it's going north. Um, so that uh, um, that looks rough. It looks like down there it's going to be just like here in Phoenix. It's going to be pretty pretty steady. And Scottsdale did drop a lot on that list. Um, yeah, they're talking about the uh, CMI index. Scottsdale did drop, and they're you know they're more geared towards high end. Uh, fluctuation because of the stock market so i do have a listing coming up there between march 3rd and march 5th but um i'm gonna i might be back here next friday pat for us um i'm coming back um friday morning next week so we'll see what happens uh i'll see if i can connect while i'm down there and uh see if uh i can at least do a few updates but uh i'm live hoping report I'm from the live report from the rocky point jail mexican jail that's right. Yeah. I'm going to try and dress appropriately. So, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that'll be my first request. Instead of, can I make my phone call? When I get you have, guys, you have an internet connection? <laughs> Wi-Fi? <laughs> you have Wi-Fi? I got a show to do. <laughs> I can't stay here. I can't. So. Oh, shoot. Oh, God. All right, Pat. Well, I'm going to let you go before you hork up a lung and yeah. uh, appreciate our millions and millions of viewers once again tuning in. And yeah, thank we'll you. And see you again next week. Take care. All right. Have a good weekend.